morning to you and thank you for letting us into your home to bring a worship service that you will never forget. My name is Sister Judy Groover and I want to welcome you to the Fisherman and Men Church, 3641 Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., where the feast of the Lord is going on. And if this is your very first time we want to say welcome to you for being our special guest this morning. And while we wait for others to come on in, come on in, come on in to the house of the Lord. We want you to hit share so someone else can have a chance to come on in. And while we wait just a few more seconds, I want everyone who's listening to my voice right now, we would like to know who's with us in service on this morning. Please, in the comment section, put your name and where you're from so we can get more acquainted with you. And thank you again for having church with us on this morning. God bless you. Thank God for you joining in. All of you, we are getting ready to take you before the throne of grace. If you would just for a moment put in the comments below what your prayer requests are. Remember, there is absolutely nothing impossible for God. So I want you to type right now and put your prayer requests in the comment field. Maybe you need to be healed. Maybe you need God to provide for you. Maybe you have a son or a daughter that needs to be saved. Whatever your prayer request is, remember that we have a God that can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. So as you put your prayer request below, we're going to go before God in prayer, knowing that where there are two or three gathered together in his name, even though it's virtual, that he is right here, right in the midst, and he is a God that answers our prayers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this moment, for this opportunity to come before you, to give you all of the glory, to give you all the honor. You are such a holy God. You are so wonderful to us. You have brought us through many trials, many tribulations. We have been on the mountaintop. We've been in the valley low. We've been in the in-between process. But right now, in this present time, we are just thankful for you. We're so, so thankful that you have spoken to our hearts, that you have blessed us in ways that we could never imagine. And so, God, we're just asking that you would do the same thing right now during this service, that you would inundate us with the presence of your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us up with joy, peace and happiness, that you would answer those prayer requests in the comment box, Lord that sister that needs healing, that brother that needs provision, Lord, that family that needs protection and favor. We ask your blessings upon them right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read to you the scripture for the morning out of Psalms 91. This is one of my favorite Psalms that uh, I was introduced to when I first got saved. And Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the wicked. I've read to you Psalms 91 verses 1 through 8, and may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Sister Andrea Jenkins, and I'm here just to give my testimony of how good, great, and awesome our God is. I just thank and praise God for being able to be here Sunday morning to give you guys a, just my testimony. Just thank the Lord. I thank Elder Ibrahim and giving all praises unto God for him and Mother Mother Groover, uh, sister, sister Judy Groover, Sister Alicia. I just thank you all, Fisherman of Men Church. I just thank you just for allowing me to give me this time to give our Lord the praise because he's so worthy 
of the praise. I just want to thank him for that. I'm, I'm a graduate now. I have my master's degree. As you can see, I'm dressed in this, right? But I thank and praise God because I received my master of arts and teaching degree from University of District of Columbia. Go Firebirds because they they have listened to the Lord and they was good to me having the Lord bless bless me using them. I just thank and praise God for that. Last year around this time, I was receiving my bachelor's degree and undergrad full honors. And this year it's the same with my master's full honors. And I just thank and praise God because he's so worthy of the praise. I graduated debt free both times. God is so good. He said, if you give, give if just give him the desires of your heart and he will fulfill them. I'm going to tell you, I have the desire to go to school. My whole desire, my entire time raising my daughters, Kiera and Christina, was to go to school. And I just thought that was dead. But my testimony is God will speak to any dead thing. Don't ever think that something is dead because he will speak to just like he did to Lazarus. He spoke to the dead and he rose up the same thing to any situation, anything you think that you have desired for. And I'm telling you, God, you, God will speak to it and it will revive. That's how he is. So like I said, I came debt free out of it. All glory to God. And I started out as a front desk receptionist at the place at the university as well. And I'm going to tell you, through this time, working full time, going to school full time, being a full time parent and paying bills, God elevated me consistently. So I started out at the front desk and ended up as the associate director. And I did tell him, no, I didn't want the director, but I'm in the director <laughs> position. But the reason why was because I said, no, God got something else for me. And I'm here. I'm here this Sunday morning to tell you it ain't over. Don't let COVID-19 even make you think that you're that it's over. God is able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to to the power that worketh within us. And we got the power this morning of the Holy Spirit that works within us, Lord God. And I stood on this one scripture, well, I stood on a lot, but I stood on this one scripture, which was James 2 and 18, which says, faith without works is dead. And he said, show me your faith by your works. I said, Lord, you're going to bless me. I already know. And wherever I set my foot upon the tread, I possess the land. Understand your inheritance. And I thank God for, for my inheritance. You and I both have the same. Hallelujah. We are Abraham's seed. And we are blessed. And as you can see, my cap says, thank you. Thank you to Kiara and Christina. I just thank my daughters. I thank you all because I know folks were praying for me when I didn't know how to pray. And I just thank you for that. My prayer is that you continuously pray for me and I'll be doing the same. I promise you, we're going to possess every single thing that God has for us in Jesus name. Praise the Lord, everybody. And happy Sunday. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. To all of you that are watching, my name is Angelica Hamilton, and I bring you greetings from Fishermen of Men Church, where brotherly love is more than a motto. We're so excited about this opportunity to come together again and lift up the name of Jesus. During this quarantine time, you can worship with us each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. via our website, fishermenofmenchurch.org, or you can also see us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. You can also listen to our podcast each Sunday evening at 11.30 on myspiritdc.com or you can download our Fishermen of Men Church app. Lastly, please continue to participate in weekly online giving. There are three ways to give virtually. You can give via our website, which is fishermenofmenchurch.org or you can text the word GIVE to 301-709-7233. Lastly, you can give via our cash app, which is the dollar sign FOM3641. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And I pray you be blessed in Jesus' name. Do you know what this year is? It's our anniversary. It's 50 years for the Fisherman of Men Church. 
20, 20, 50 years standing on the wall. This ministry was built with prayer and fasting. I thank God for being a part of such an amazing ministry. And we want to give special honor to the founder of this ministry, the late Bishop Clarence Groover Sr. and our First Lady, Mother Nettie Groover, who stood right beside him all the way. And his loyal children, Sonia Groover, Anita Groover, Clarence Groover Jr., myself, Judy Groover, Roy Russell the fourth, and the entire Fisherman of Men Church family, and those who have been impacted. And if you're listening to me right now, we are all we are pulling you in to this celebration. We thank God for 50 years all year long. We are going to be giving God thanks for 50 years. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I love today for being a cancer survivor for over 40 some years. I praise him for being a keeper. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. I thank you for being married for 54 years to Bishop Clarence Gruber. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for our marriage, how the Lord blessed us with four children. Hallelujah. But now I have one with Sister Judy Gruber. Hallelujah. My caretaker. I thank God. Hallelujah. 
called for his keeping power. I really love him more today than I did on yesterday. I praise God, hallelujah, as I sit here. I'm 82 years old, hallelujah. Oh, God has been keeping me, hallelujah. Oh, God, the blood running warm in my veins, hallelujah. I have a mind to praise him and to magnify his holy name. God is a comforter. I praise God, hallelujah. Oh, God, this may praise the Lord. Bishop Grew went home to be with the Lord. But God is a comforter. He's keeping me. Hallelujah. He's keeping a roof over my head. Food on the table. Hallelujah. Able to get up. Hallelujah. My shot no mama. Hallelujah. Magnify his name. All oh, glory to God. God is a keeper. Praise him. And I praise him. I love him. Hallelujah. And I praise him. Hallelujah. I just want to keep a praise on my lip and a thank you deep down in my heart. Hallelujah. Even now it's going through. I don't know how everything is going to come out or what the end is going to be. But right now, hallelujah, I magnify him. He's a good God. He's a keeper. Even hallelujah, this virus that we are going through, hallelujah, he's keeping me and my family, Lord, hallelujah. And I praise him for it. Even this morning, as my feet hit the floor, hallelujah, I was able Hallelujah to walk, hallelujah. I was able to talk. I was able to see I am blessed. Hallelujah, and I praise God. I love the Lord, hallelujah, and I praise his holy name. Desire that you may continue to pray. Hallelujah, those out there, you know, let's continue to unite ourselves together and magnify the name of the Lord and be grateful. The song say I'm grateful. Be grateful, hallelujah, because God is in control. Pray for my joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. The sky shall unfold. Prepare
God bless you. Wow. What powerful testimonies, man. What beautiful song. I tell you, Mother Groover, we love you so much. You inspire us so dearly. Uh, praise the Lord. Everybody, it's good to see everybody here this morning. And I know that you are and have already been blessed by what has been said and done. My name is Pastor Abraham Bellinger with First Fruits Community Church in Somerville, South Carolina. But I am honored and blessed uh, to have received a request to bring the word to you this morning at Fishermen of Men Church. I tell you, Bishop Clarence Groover, the late bishop, uh, has been such an inspiration in my life, a mentor, a father figure, and so many other things. Uh, truly miss him. 
And I don't count it lightly to have this opportunity to come before you with a word from the Lord. Amen. We give him honor. Uh, we give all of the elders and ministers honor. We thank God for the Groover family, for the First Lady, Mother Groover. And to everybody that is chiming in, I'm telling you right now, you need to invite someone else to come watch and hear this word. They are not too late. They can jump on right now and get a word from the Lord because I have something especially for you this morning. God has given it to me and it, it is for you. Amen. You ought to put that in the comments. I receive this word right now. So I want to take you into the book of Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 through 27. Uh, that's the book of Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 through 27. I'm going to read into your hearing at this time this blessed word from the Lord. The word of God reads like this, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying on this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Father, we thank you right now because you are the living word. I have spoken your word. I have read this word into the hearing of your people. Now, oh God, give me the capacity, the ability, and the anointing through your spirit to deliver unto them what you have given unto me. At this time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning from a message entitled, The Blessing. A message entitled, The Blessing. You need to put that in the comments right now. The Blessing. You know, God, from before creation... Uh, before he made mankind, had already ordained and he had already purposed, he had already willed that his sons and that his daughters would be blessed, period. Why? Because we know that from observing and witnessing God's character, both in the scriptures and our personal lives, we understand that our God is not just a holy God and he's not only a righteous God, but that our God is good. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to put that in the comment box. God is good. He is an all perfect, all knowing, all seeing, all powerful and all good God. He is full of love towards his children, his sons and daughters. He's in love with us. And so we see this. We see the integrity of God stands eternal like he never fails. His integrity is solid. We know that God's intentions towards us is truly pure, that he has no ill will towards us, that he's totally in love with us. We know that not only that, but God and his capabilities, is he's able to do absolutely anything that we could even imagine or think of. And we also know that our God produces results. Praise God. Our God is absolutely unequivocally uh, the one absolute true God that can do anything but fail. We know that. And so in knowing that and serving such a beautiful God, serving such an amazing God, ser serving such an awesome God, we also understand that there is the antagonist. We know that there is the enemy of our soul. We know that Satan from the beginning, when he rebelled against God, has desired to separate us from fellowship with him. He has desired to tear down and destroy everything that God has ever created. And so when God blessed us in the garden with his spirit of life, when he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and we became a living soul, uh, the breath of God was a blessing. He literally looked upon the clay that he formed and he breathed the spirit of life into him. And we became living souls. We were blessed. 
And yet we fell into temptation in the garden. We fell into sin and Adam and Eve brought all mankind under sin. My God, my God, never, our God never meant for us to live a life in sin. He has never meant for us to live a life separated from him. He ordained us, he made us, he created us to be in relationship with him uh, because he is a God that loves and wants to be loved. Let's talk about that a little bit. He is a God that loves and wants to be loved. There is a blessing in knowing that our heavenly father is a lover and he needs love from us. And what we understand and know is that though the enemy got in the midst of all of that, God loved us so much to where he decided that he was going to do whatever he needed to do to ensure that we come into relationship with him. Now, he already thought this thing through. He already knew this before creation. And so he executed his plan of redemption and began to win us back to him, begin to reconcile us back to him to make all things right so that we could live in a blessed relationship with him. And so in the context of Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, what we see here is something called the blessing. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the blessing. The blessing this morning is, is, is something that God has ordained for his people to receive and live in. So God gives commandment to Moses and he tells uh, Moses uh, to, to speak to Aaron, who was the high priest, and to the priesthood of God in the Old Testament at that time. And he wanted them to know that because they were a peculiar people, they were a royal priesthood, they were a called out people out of the heathen nations, that they were a blessed nation. Praise God. And so uh, God told Moses to establish the blessing upon the people. And when he told him this, he says, I want you to speak to them. And, and, and here's what I want to pause for a second on speaking, because we have a responsibility to open our mouths as sons and daughters of God and to speak blessings over our lives, over the life of our children, over the life of our children's children. We have the power in our tongue to bring life. We have the power in our speech to bring blessings to generations by what we say out of the heart that's within us. And so, so we have power in our, in our words. I want you to get that this morning. I want you to understand that, that even after service this morning, when you are, are done worshiping God with us and you turn off that phone or that computer, that, that you have a responsibility to speak a blessing over your home. Hallelujah. You have a responsibility uh, and a command to speak a blessing over your life, over your children, over your husband, over your wife, over your family, even over your enemies. And so God gives command to Moses to speak to Aaron, speak to the priests and tell them that when they bless the children of Israel, that they are to say this, that the Lord bless thee. Now, that word blessing simply means favor and protection. And so when the priest stood up under the anointing and the authority of God and spoke to the children of Israel, saying, the Lord bless thee, that when they said that, there would be a favor and a protection that would come upon them from God. That's why I want to let you know it doesn't matter what's going on right now with the coronavirus, with all these pestilences and, and all these rumors of wars and all this craziness that's going on in our lifetime right now. You don't have to fret. You don't have to worry because the Lord blesses you. The Lord has looked upon you with favor. The Lord has protected you. That's why Psalms 91 lets us know that under his feathers, we trust that he covers us. He protects us from all hurt, from all harm, from all danger. Amen. So I want you to understand the blessing this morning. Uh, he says, tell them the Lord 
bless thee and keep thee. Now, it's one thing to be favored. It's another thing to be protected. But then it's a whole nother level when God says, I'm going to keep you. What he's saying is the favor that's on your life is not going to go away. Oh, my Lord. I feel the Holy Spirit right now this morning. The anointing of God on your life won't go away. The favor, the protection, the covering over your life since when you were born, before you were born, is not going anywhere. The Lord bless you and keep you. All right. Then he says the Lord talking about God because he's the blesser. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. You know, I used to think about that and. I, I thought about uh, celebrating my son graduating from second grade going into third grade this year. And, uh, you know, I praise God because, look, we did some a whole lot of homeschooling. And for a little while, we weren't quite sure how we we're going to get through that. But God brought us through. Our son graduated and um, they were giving out awards. And and uh, some of those awards, you know, were for different things. And he didn't get an award. You know, he did a good job. He had good grades, but everybody else got an award. But I was so proud of him to where when we left the graduation, uh, we I, I went to my office and I printed off a certificate of completion uh, that had some some really nice stuff on the certificate. And then I gave him a little gift. Uh, and, and when I presented it to him, I looked at him and I told him how proud I was of him and how I support him. And how uh, how I am just excited that he is getting ready to go into the next level of his life into third grade. And he lit up when when I gave it to him. And, and this is what we call when when God looks upon you, when God causes his face to shine upon you, he's looking upon you with with calm. He's looking upon you with favor. He's looking upon you and saying, my son, my daughter. You have favor with me. I am in support of you. I'm in approval of you. You are on a good side of life. You're under my blood. I got you sheltered. I want to let you know that the Lord right now is in the midst of all this darkness is causing his face to shine upon you. The Lord is literally being gracious to you right now. And he is lifting up the countenance of his face upon you. He is looking at you with favor and he wants you to know right now that you are under his approval, that there's absolutely nothing right now that you can do that God says, I will turn my back from you. As long as you don't turn your back from him, our God is looking upon you and he's blessing you. And let me tell you something, even if you've turned your back on him, even if you've sinned, even if you made a mistake, our God loves us so much that he's faithful and just to forgive us and still look upon us with favor and blessing. We're talking about the blessing this morning. And so he says, the Lord lift up this countenance upon you and give you peace. That word peace in the Hebrew is the word called Shalom. And my daughter's name is Shalomar. I heard a long time ago that name and I thought it was a beautiful name. And so I said, you know, if I ever have a daughter, I'm going to name her Shalimar. Well, my first child was a girl and I named her Shalimar. She's 23 years old now. But when I got saved a few months after she was born, I realized that the root word of her name is Shalom, which means peace. And that word is, is not a simple word. It is a complex word. That word peace doesn't just mean tranquility. It doesn't just mean serenity, but that word peace means um, uh, success, completeness, fulfillment, wholeness. It means harmony with God. It means that you are that you have well being. You see, what God has done is he's he's gotten rid of his wrath through the blood of Jesus Christ so that now as sons and daughters, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are no long, longer under his wrath, but our Lord God has given us peace. You see the blessing in the Old Testament was great, but the New Testament, the new covenant blessing is greater. Our blessings far are far superior 
than what the Old Testament saints experienced. And so today, right now, I want to let you know that God is telling you that his blessing is for you. His blessing is towards you, that he is looking upon you, that, that, that right now, even as I speak these words, I command the blessing to come upon you. What kind of blessing, Pastor? The blessing that comes upon you and overtakes you. The blessing that while you're in the midst of your trial, that while you're in the midst of your tribulation, that in the midst of your midnight hour, while you're feeling lonely, while you're feeling by yourself, while you're shut up in your house and can't see the people you want to see, that, that the Lord is going to right now bless you at, in a way you can never imagine. That his favor is upon you right now. That the Lord sees you where you are at. And he's going to give you blessing after blessing after blessing. And it's going to come upon you and it's going to overtake you. What kind of blessing are you talking about this morning? Pastor Bellinger, I'm telling you, the blessing is the type of blessing that everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon, God's going to give it to you. God's going to favor you when you apply for that job. Some of you lost your jobs due to the coronavirus and, and it, it has impacted your financial stability. But it's only temporary because the favor of God that's on your life right now is going to cause you to come before people and they're not going to understand why, but they are going to hire you. They may, they may call you up and bring you back and put you in a greater position. But I prophesy the blessing over you right now that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above only, hallelujah, and not beneath. Blessed shalt thou be when you go in. Hallelujah. Blessed shalt thou be when you go out. Amen. When we come out of this coronavirus, when we come out of quarantine, you're walking in blessings, baby. You're getting ready to experience an outpouring of the favor and blessings of God in your life that you that you have never imagined before. What you've thought of is small. God's about to do something great and big. He's about to expand your influence. He's about to bless the works of your hands. He's about to save your unsaved children. He's about to save your unsaved spouse, all because the Lord's blessing is upon you. I want to tell you right now that there is nothing better in life than to be under the blessing of God. When I got saved in 1996 and I realized that the first 18 years of my life was out under from under his blessing, but he was so gracious to me to love me enough to pull me in and save me, that alone showed me how much God loved me and wanted to bless me. And here I am now, 20 something years later, preaching the gospel to all you fine folks this morning that have chimed in. And I wanna let you know your prayer request that you put in is being answered right now. And what you think is gonna take a long time is not gonna take long. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. And so he said, he said, when you bless them, lift up your hands and do it. And the reason why they lifted up their hands is because when they lifted up their hands, it was the sign of the Hebrew letter sheen. Uh, when you look at the Hebrew letter sheen, it looks like when a person lifts up your hands. And so when you lift up your hand, it is literally putting God's name on his, on his people. So he said that verse 27, he says, the priest shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Let me tell you something. The Bible tells us that we should put on the Lord Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. That if you're not saved, that he loves you so much that that he suffered, bled and died on the cross. And Jesus rose the third day and he's ascended into the heavens. And he's pouring out his blessing. And all you got to do is believe and repent and, and then be born again of the water and the spirit. Baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's, it's not hard. It's, all you got to do is put your faith in God and you can enter in to the blessings that you could never imagine in your life. It is a blessing to be in relationship with God. It's a blessing to be under his favor. It's a blessing to be under his protection. Now, I want to let you know right now that your God, our God is for you. He's in love with you. He wants you. He sees you. He understands you. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. To all of you that are saved and you've been pushing 
and you've been praying and you've been fasting, you've been getting in your word more. Let me tell you something. The Lord is looking on you right now. His favors upon you right now. He's smiling upon you. Your father is happy with you. He sees your faithfulness, mother. He sees how you have not stopped to praise him. You, you continually praise him. You continually glorify him. You continually give him your life. You continue to give in times of turmoil. And God says, I see you and I bless you, my da daughter. I bless you, my son. I bless you, mother. I bless you, father. I bless your family. I bless your children. I bless your children's children. I bless their generation. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I'm talking about the blessings this morning that are upon you in Jesus name. I want to let you know you can you don't have to be discouraged during these times. I know it's been hard. All of us have been feeling it in some shape, form or fashion. But let me tell you something. God is not off duty. We serve the sovereign God and he is in the blessing business. And let me tell you one more thing about this blessing that one day there's going to be a sound made from heaven. Amen. This trumpet of God is going to chime off in the air and the dead in Christ are going to rise. And those that are alive and remain are going to be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. What a blessed day that will be. That is our blessed hope. That is the victorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ for the saints. And that day is coming. It's coming sooner than we think. And so I want you to realize the blessings that God has for you of favor and peace and that he wants you and, and, and he wants to do something great in your life before he returns. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. I pray that you enjoy this word this morning. This anointing is upon you and your family right now. And I want to let you know that all you have to do is receive the word. If you receive the word in your spirit and you say, Lord, be it unto me according to your will, that you're going to see the manifestation of the blessings of God in your life like never before. And let me tell you something. One thing I've learned is that, it, that whether it be times like this, times where things are crazy and, and, and economies are falling and people are getting sick and, 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 and disease is spreading and the virus is times like this, I've learned is a great time to sow into the kingdom. Why? Because it is, first of all, it's more blessed. There's that word again. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But yet also God gives seed to the sower. And anytime you let that seed go, that he, he, he will continue to give you seed that you might continue to sow, that you might continue to be able to take care of the responsibilities that you have. And so I want to encourage you this morning that right now you should give, you should, you should reach deep and make a sacrificial offering. Uh, give your tithes and offerings to Fishermen of Men Church. Uh, you can see and you can do it three different ways. You can go to uh, www.fishermenofmenchurch.org. Uh, you can also cash app your offering to the dollar sign FOM3641. That's another great way you can give. Or you can also text to give. Uh, you can text give to 301-709-7233. The blessings of the Lord are upon you. As you give, speak it out of your mouth. As you give, say it. Say, my bank account's blessed. My, my, my finances are blessed. My children are blessed. You can, you can give yourself into a place of healing as, as you sow into the kingdom. So I encourage you to sow this morning. Uh, we love you so much. We praise God for fishermen of men church. Uh, I, I thank God for the relationship we have. I, I, I feel, and I can say this, that I'm a son of fishermen of men church. Praise God. I love mother Groover, the Groover family and to all the saints and to all of our friends and family watching us, make sure you stay chimed in every Sunday, stay connected with this ministry. And I know that the blessings of the Lord will richly come upon you. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, hallelujah, and give you peace. And I right now put the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you be healed. May you walk in blessing and favor all the days of your life in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. We love you so much. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us again on this Sunday. And we invite you right back next Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next Sunday is Youth Sunday. If there's youth in your home, pull them on the couch with you next Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have an amazing service laid out for our youth. And this week, this week, the world is in need of love. And this is how we all can participate. Where brotherly love is more than a motto, I want each and every one of you to show love, show so much love. And if you show love, it will be given back to you. And if you receive this and this, this challenge, it's not really a challenge. It should just be something we do anyway. But if you, we're going to be on one accord doing this, I want you to, in the comment section, hashtag brotherly love. If you're going to commit to this and be a part of this movement, I want you to go to the comment section and put hashtag brotherly love. Thank you, and I'll see you again next week.